In the age ago, and a time now almost forgotten, heroes of the realm were abundant. Adventure, spirits, and wonder blew through the skies and over its lands, as easy as a breeze in the spring afternoon. Memories forgotten, the great heroes of the realm vanished, and their deeds became myth. No one can say for certain where or why they left, perhaps for greater treasures across the seas. Others say they went to fight the gods of the heavens and hells themselves. Of course, the common people remained, the farmers, craftsmen, merchants, the men and creatures of the earth, and from deep beneath the earth, the darkness saw this abandonment. Far in the crust, the darkness grew and spread, and it set its minions out, gathering and pillaging and spreading forth its all-consuming will. It tore down and burned and defiled the temples of the gods the people had forgotten. The heroes never returned. And evil subdued the righteous. Empires were broken. Kingdoms became vassals. Lords became serfs. The darkness crawled over the mountains and through the lands and into the air and no one could escape its tyranny. The people scattered and broken, the monsters and beasts had dominion over the world once again. Do you feel it? Something strange, something I've not felt in a long time. It is like the wind rustling the leaves in autumn, something familiar. What is your character thinking? What is she thinking? Yes. Uh, I don't know. Like, I... What, like, does she feel the change that you're talking about? Or... You wake up in your room, breathing deeply. It must have been a, another one of your nightmares. Restless sleep. You wake up to the sounds of someone nailing wood downstairs. Sweat beads from down your forehead. Another night terror. Was it the man? The shadow? Um. Your belly aches. You haven't eaten for days. You stir in your bed, which is on the second floor of the Burgermaster's mansion. And I'll show you the map. Mansion. Okay. And you're right about here. So let me switch it over. You're right about uh, here. Okay. You're in the large sort of center of the town of the village of Barovia, Barovia village of Barovia. Your adopted father, Ismark the Lesser, who is the town's burgomaster, has generally, generously taken you in under his wing and tutelage after you ran away while you were young. So you're looking out, you're in your room at the second floor of this burgomaster's mansion and you've, you're sleepless, you're tireless. And you, you have one another one of your night terrors. Was it the man? The shadow? The spirits? What bothers you? Um, 
Um, you can also kind of role play, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so she just had a night terror. You're you saying? just woke up. Okay. Um. It's a morning. You have a window that, you know, you can look out into the city. You know where you're at. You know the city. You know the place. You don't know what the time is. You don't know the day or the month of the year. It all blends together for you. Okay. Um, you're a woman, would... young. You look beautiful. Have you been beautiful before? You don't know. You think you have. Okay. Um, I guess the first thing I would probably like You're to the do nailing is... downstairs. You know, someone's nailing something downstairs. You look out, the streets are mostly empty. And the clouds are covering the sky with a great, you know, just a great tone. Mm -hmm. The city streets, there's, it must have rained last night again. It's difficult for you to sleep lately. It's hard. What do you do? Uh, I want to see what's going on downstairs with the with the nailing. You always felt strange, always out of place, trying to run, escape. But you can't escape without the terrors of your homeland, Barovia. Even when you were a girl, the wolves, bats, and creatures of the night all took notice of you watching. Traveling at night became too dangerous since you were young. Eyes always in the shadows, prowling, searching. You can't see them, but you can feel them. An unmistakable glare. What is your character thinking? Um. She is thinking about the uh, night terror that she just witnessed. She's kind of dazed because she just woke up. Um, so how it works is I yeah. will, I'm trying to get better on editing over in Zoom, uh, the OBS stuff. So I actually have the browser pull up with your character sheet. Okay. So what I will do is roll an insight check you don't see the roll, so you're trying to remember something. You think about it, something. You just feel a dread, a sense of dread that something is always out for you, looking for you all your life. What do you think? Um, I would be kind of panicked. I think she's... You start breathing, you kind yeah. of are hyperventilating a little bit. The terror is kind of taking over you again, but you must stand strong. You must have resolve. You can't <laughs> give in to the fear. For those who give in to the fear, give away and just go away. Um, I feel like I would want to um, probably get out of bed and out of my room so that I don't. I pro would probably associate going to bed with the night terrors, so I would probably want to get out of there. You get out of your room, you don't feel safe. Now, you have a disguise kit, because you always disguise yourself before you leave. You never leave the house looking like you do, because you always feel something or someone or people are watching you. It's not safe. You've learned the arts of disguising yourself. To not draw attention to yourself. You can't even remember almost how you came here. It all blends together. Why are you here? It doesn't matter. You're safe for now. Maybe. You unlock your door. It's locked with three bolts. Like three locks. Mm -hmm. So you unlock it. And you have a key that you hang around your neck. And you take it off. And you unlock that. You open the door. The old manor, you know, just, you can hear the full boards creak when you walk across it with your leather boots. Before you go, though, do you want to disguise yourself? Probably, yeah. I mean, if, 
Well, am I going outside or am I just going downstairs? Do the people know me downstairs? You don't there know. Are people? You hear it nailing know. downstairs. You assume it's Ismark, your adopted uh, father. Probably to be safe, I would disguise myself just in case. You just start to disguise yourself. Do you make your way downstairs? You've practiced disguising yourself kind of many times. You know, you make yourself maybe uglier than you look so you don't draw attention to yourself. So, you know, men don't take notice. You maybe add like a scar across your face or something. Or, you know, you make yourself look like an older woman. Mm -hmm. Wrinkles, paler skin. But you want to blend it too. You don't want to look too obvious. Yeah. You start making your way downstairs. And Ismark is down there. He's nailing. You see him as you kind of go down the stairs. And so how I do it is I will link you Ismark's sheet in Zoom chat. And then what I do is also link it. One thing I'm doing is I'm linking it in um, uh, Twitch. So people are like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so I link it in Twitch. This is Ismark the Lesser. And I kind of put some more information there. He's an NPC. You know, that means he's played by the Dungeon Master, which is me. But it also has a little bit of information about him, too. If I reveal, want to reveal that information to you, some information might be hidden. Let me also link it over to the browser so people can kind of see it. This is Ismark the Lesser. Cool. I'm trying to get better with all this stuff, like the production of it. So when we put the video and everything together, it looks better. Yeah. So you make your way downstairs. He's nailing coffins. There's like quite a few coffins that are just there that are just being nailed. And he sees you come down and he's like, good morning. Uh, I say good morning. What time is it? You slept in again, didn't you? Yes, it appears so. He's like, this is hard work, but no one else will do it. I'm too afraid to go to the graveyard and the chapel, especially at night. Maybe I will go today, load up the wagons, with the horses, and take these coffins to give the people a proper burial. I'm, I'm sure they will appreciate it. He says, Irina, we need some food, though. Uh, she, she goes, I will, I will go out to the, um, where do they get food? Like, markets? I'll go out to the markets today and get some food to bring back. You see one of the coffins? It has your name on it. What do you do? Um, I ask him about it. <laughs> what What are you looking at? You look scared. Do you need help, my child? Why Why does that coffin have my name on it? And you both look at it again. It doesn't have your name on it anymore. She just kind of plays it off. She's like, Ah, never mind. I I must be. I must be too too tired but on the inside she's like you can, it's you know, unmistakable you out. saw something yeah yeah and you think about it the visions the something is happening and it's gotten worse ever since the dark one has taken notice of you well I'm hungry aren't you hungry oh absolutely starving why don't you take your friend uh, Carly if you're afraid to go by yourself? She will go with you. You can trust her. I will stay here and keep working. And he kind of is like, he's kind of tired. He's out of breath. He's been nailing, you know, shit all day over like all yeah. morning. And you know, you didn't even wake up, you know, until this happened. You don't know. He's like, well, are you going? 
He kind of yeah. just keeps nailing away. Yeah. You leave the door, you you leave, you go outside. If I just kind of mark it on the map, you kind of just walk outside. Carly, one of your friends, just lives right across the street, right? And I'm going to link you her character sheet right now. Okay. Let me also link it over and do all this stuff for everybody else. So this is Carly Vusk. She is a personal friend of yours. You've known her for a while, and she's basically... You know, you've always kind of been mistrustful of men, in a way, for some reason. You know, not too much like you can't but you're just reluctant to trust men for whatever reason but so carly has just kind of earned your faith and she's always been trust you know trustworthy uh for you and she's a good friend she must be inside you walk across the street the mud on the street it's dawn though or you know a little past um you know in the morning but um the sky is mostly cloudy gray been that way for as long as you can remember it's getting colder winter is coming and your mud soaked boots squish on the muddy streets what do you do i i walk up to her door and i i knock on it three times you knock on it and you see like she has like a she's on one of the unusual people that has like a window like a bay window or whatever so you can see inside and she's in there and she sees you she's already dressed and she's like she comes to the door and says car says Irina how are you doing um i i'm doing uh how am i doing <laughs> um do you look a little shaken like you saw a ghost yeah i've i've been having a pretty bad morning pretty bad morning there's no such thing as ghosts. They don't exist. <laughs> she just kind of laughs it off, like, like, you know, like it's trying to act like it's not that much of a big deal. Yeah, it's not. Relax. We'll go down to a uh, Bid Rats Mercantile, just down the street. You need some food. Yeah. yeah you guys I need some food. just kind of walk off together, and she's just standing by right by side by side you the streets are not completely absent but you remember there used to be a lot more um people that used to roam the streets but for some reason there's just less people around you look at houses around it's some of them are boarded up vacant the town is strange um people are here though like some people and the people that do are kind of crossing the street where you're going you know doing just their daily business they look at you with a dreary look like you know they don't smile at all their their eyes look vacant you know they they've seen better days and you're just making your way to the mercantile do you want to say anything to Carly? Yeah, we could do we could do small talk. Um, she she asks her. She's like, "Well, how did you sleep last night?" I, I slept fantastic. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. I slept great. Did you have one on another night terrace? Oh, you know it. <laughs> of course, I did. Who did you see this time? I I saw the um. What's his name? The You don't uh, know. I saw the um a a dark figure. The figure? Yeah. That's dark. just nonsense. <laughs> she says. Don't believe in that. Those are just nightmares are for children. She shrugs it off and she goes she she goes, I saw what I saw. You see like some Fasanti traders in town. They sometimes bring like wine and trade throughout the city and they're the people who kind of trade goods with the people. If anybody has anything of value to trade with, you know, people of rena renowned and fame sometimes come to Bar uh, Barovia for their own reasons and purposes, whether it be selfish, you know, power, lust, whatever. 
they come here and then sometimes they come to this this the first place they come to is a village it's on the edge of the city uh, edge of the of the country or whatever the territory and um you look to the sky and there's just a fog and you think that you remember seeing something you kind of remember that was up there but you just you you you're hazy and like in my dream it was right. up there or? dream reality and as soon as you think that you just snap out of it and you walk right in to uh the mercantile and so i'm gonna blindfold you and we'll load up the map So usually during these times when I am loading maps and stuff, let me blindfold you again. Boop. And um, when I'm loading maps and things, um, you can role play with other player characters because it takes yeah. me a few minutes to like set things up, build the, everything in there and see it's, this one built pretty quick. I don't know why the other one built so slowly. Um, and I think I already have your character in here, did I? Or don't I? No. Because I didn't know if you would make one. So I'll just put you in. So I leave that character on your character base right there all the time. And let me pull out Carly here. And I'll unblindfold you. So sometimes I use Fog of War when I feel like you're walking into an unknown place, right? And I showed you a little bit of that yesterday. It's maybe a place that's dangerous. There might be monsters around the corner. Something like that. So this is the mercantile. And you guys just walk in. And Carly is standing right next to you. And this is just to kind of give you practice. I don't know why your model's all flipped like that. Um, there's like a brazier in the middle of it. Because it's getting cold out. It's probably like the high of the day is like 40, 50 degrees. I do mark those on the calendar. I'm just not updating the calendar right now, but I will yeah. next game on Sunday. So, um, you know, so there's some, uh, this is a, sort of the general store where people come and do trades, like the traders come here all the time. So, I mean, there's business and things to be had. And Carly like sees you kind of, you know, stop walking and she just continues ahead of you to go up to the counter. Uh -oh. You're bumped into Carly. She's like, stop bumping into me. <laughs> She's like, you're too close. You must have you been drinking this morning. Oh, says, I wish I wish. And this guy, he kind of looks his hands are supposed to be on the table. But um, and sometimes the models, they don't match exactly what I pull out for the char character character. Yeah. But this is his name. We're at the Build Wrath Mercantile. So I'm going to link you that I'm going to link it to the browser first so people can see it. And then I link it to the Twitch chat. And then I link it to Zoom. So I have to link it, you know, five or six places here. There it is. And he's like an older man. He's the owner of Build Rath's Mercantile in the village of Borovia. Um, in Borovia, which is the main city. He's an older man, you know, stern looking guy. He's like he like size as you see he sees you come in he's like how may I help you um we would like to buy some some food ha huh. would you uh yes what yes. do you what, need what what kind of food do you have here uh he like he pulls off some rations he's like one gold piece and, his, and uh, Carly is like, she's frustrated just how expensive shit is. Yeah. This shop is very expensive for some reason. And you don't know why. Um, There's just such like a miss. You just feel like shit is just so overpriced. Do you pay him the gold for the rations or do you starve? I, I pay him the gold. Mark it I on your character sheet. He hands you one day's worth. Uh, he hands you actually two days worth of rations because you got to get one for you and Ismark, your uh, adopted. Because uh, Ismark isn't a farmer, you know. He's like the burgomaster. He's like the mayor of the city. Okay. Yeah. How do I? What you just go to D and D Beyond, and then you yeah. mark it in your manage under manage equipment. 
equipment, uh, fashions. Pretty cool though. You get the key and you see the shop and everything like that. Do you want to look mm -hmm. around the shop anymore? Oh yeah, sure. Why not? Where do you want to go? He's like Maybe. looking at you very closely after you bought it though. This brazier that's night like right next to you over here is like warming up the whole building. It's got like hot coals in it. Um, someone must be feeding it, you know, fresh wood and stuff like that to keep it warm. What do you want to do? Um, sorry, can you say that again? I was adding the rations. <laughs> no, you're good. So there's just this fireplace here, this um, like brazier that has hot coals in it. And it's like hot charcoal, really, if you think about it. Someone must be adding it to it. He's sitting behind the counter just waiting for people to come in and out. Nobody's coming in and out right now. But, you know, he just has to wait there for people to show up because he never knows who's going to show up. He's got he's a good merchant. He's always standing up waiting for people to come in. He makes a lot of money. I want to check out what... He's dressed well if you look at his picture, too. You know, he's dressed in, like, nice robes yeah. and stuff. All fancy. Yep. Um. Are are these supposed to be shelves and stuff like that? Yeah, they're supposed to be bookshelves. So there's okay. like scrolls, magical items, things I, like I, that. Maybe. I probably want to look over here. Just browse a little bit, maybe. What are you? Are you looking for anything in particular? Um. Carly's just making sure you're safe. Yeah. She's no, just kind of looking I'm not out looking. for you. She's like checking the door. Or she's like making sure nobody's coming in. Now you're disguised as well. Yeah. So it, uh, Ismark knows who you are, but he didn't like call you by name. So he didn't really like know who you were. Your disguise has worked for now. Okay. Uh, not looking for anything particular. Maybe just like seeing what he's got. Yeah, I'll just kind of briefly say, I mean, he's got like scrolls, you know, books and everything like that of various subject matters. It's a pretty well-stocked store, you know, and back here he's got like a forge and a smithy and an artisan's table, alchemy table, if people need to w use work on it. The city itself isn't that big. Here's some just failed models or something that failed to load. Sometimes that happens or like they're not texturized like these white things. Yeah. But I mean, you have a nice like artesian rug or whatever, a Persian rug almost here. I mean, the guy has made like a fortune basically. Yeah. For some reason, you don't know why, because um, you, you haven't even asked him. But um, it, the stock, the shop is well stocked. Um, but everything in here, you're looking at the price tag. The shit is like fucking like Louis Vuitton. It's like yeah. expensive, and you know, someone like you who's like just sort of a commoner in a way. Like you're still kind of a commoner. You're maybe right below a because the burgomaster. He's just a burgomaster of this small little city. So he's not like of nobility and you're just an adopted um, person, you know, adopted, uh, what is it, um, daughter of his. So you're, uh, you don't even really have the status, you know what I mean? Um, I guess I'll ask him, you, you have a lot of, a lot of goods here. Do you mind if I ask where, where you get them from, who, who imports them? And uh, Bill Rath says he's like, none of your concern. Are you going to shop in the morning or are you going to land around? Okay, well, I guess we will. I guess we will leave then. <laughs> Thank you for your business. And he just like starts like, you know, cleaning off the thing. And so now what I'll do is just clear the board. And you're walking back, you know, you're in the villa, you're walking back to your house, you got the rations so you can eat or whatever, because your belly is starting to ache a little bit. Do you want to eat the rations on the way to uh, the house? Because you're kind of hungry already. You haven't eaten for days because you think to yourself, you remember, you haven't left the house in days to even eat. And the house is totally out of food. So you've just been living off the water, really. And the water tastes nasty as fuck. You know, yeah. it's... You want to get, you always are like, you just feel this need to like fucking leave this place too. Like you're starting to feel like something is out. You know, the, the whole world is starting to come after you. It feels like, and your only friend, Carly is just there. She's, she's well-intentioned. You've known her for a while. She's not like an evil person and she has your best, she's best interests in mind. She wants you to do well. What do you want to do? Um, 
I'll walk back home, but I'll wait. I'll wait to eat because um, I think she will want to eat with her adopted father if that's possible. You want to eat together with him? Yeah, yeah. All right, you think to yourself, that's can kind of cheer up your day a little bit. Maybe he's got something to say a little bit. You know, he's kind of a nice... He's a nice man, too. He's never hurt you at all. He took you in when you ran away a long time ago. Um, you had a brother, you remember. Um, the brother... You don't know what happened to him, but you didn't like what your, your biological father was. And you didn't like your brother, either. You don't know... If, he abused you in some way, mentally, physically, what emotionally, but you just fled from him. You know what I mean? You just, you're always running for some reason. You're just trying to get away. But you feel the, the world is always closing in around you, right? What is your character thinking? She is thinking of uh, how hungry she is. I mean, she hasn't eaten in days, obviously, so she's just... You don't want to eat your rations right now, though? Oh, no, no, no. But, um... Your belly aches a little bit. You're like, ah, fuck. As your bowel, you know, your bowels kind of turn a little bit, then Carly says, it doesn't matter if you eat in front of me. I would if I were you. She, um... She, like, smiles and kind of puts her hand out like that. And she's like, it's, it's okay. I, I would like to eat with... with and you're them. walking back. The yeah. mud, the... You know, you see the wagon tracks, you know, in the streets. You look at the sun. The, you think you see something in the sky almost, like up in the mountain or something. And you, it, it, it's almost like it won't reveal itself to you. It's covered by a thick, eerie mist or gray, you know, thing. And you see your, you look back at your, um, your house at the Burgomaster's mansion. Something is wrong. The door is ajar. You always remember the doors. Your, your uh, father always locks his doors and it's ajar. And you look closely. It's something's wrong. What do you do? And Carly kind of notices it too and is like, looks at you for her to see what you want to do. I like, I like motion for her to come with me and I, I don't run in so that I don't make a scene just in case that, um, there's people like watching or whatever and like that are bad. The street, I, street is strangely empty. Is it? It's okay. strangely empty again. You know, the streets like have very few people going around. You wonder if the woman has been around that is giving out the pies again. Like she's always asking for people who want pies and she's not around right now for some reason. And you think to yourself, maybe I could have gotten one of those pies that she gives, but she doesn't, she's not around. Do you run to the door? Or you're just kind of briskly walking. Yeah, just kind of briskly walk. You walk and you hear inside a struggle. Something is going on. Do you like walk in? Uh. I like, is it like right inside the doorway? Can I, is you it hear, like, does hear, it sound like it's far away or like closer? As you get closer to the door, like you're five feet from the door. So this is one way thing we can do to clarify things on the battle map is if I don't have this scene like set up, so like I'm over here, right? Mm -hmm. Right here where your character model is. So you're separated from the group, right? Yeah. So you're here and the door is like right here. It's okay. like you're five feet away. This is a way to simplify things to help you think about visually unless you want to like really be intricate about it. Okay. And I, of course your friend is right next to you. I could put her there if you really want me to. Yeah, yeah. That'd and be she's good. like, what do we do? And you hear inside a struggle, like a grunt. Is Mark sounds like he's, something's wrong. What do you do? I, I peek in to kind of gauge the situation better before I like bum rush it. Cause you I have don't to make to a just... stealth check. To try to like be, checked. yeah, to be unnoticed. So I, what I do is I pull up your character sheet. Your stealth is plus three. So your luck stone that you have, that your father, your um, I'm sorry, that uh, Ismark gave you, right? Your adopted father gave you this stone because he likes you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And he somehow had this stone. He's like, because you always feel in danger, so he gave you this like luck stone. 
and you get plus one to all your ability rolls, right? All saving throws, that's what this luck stone does. So you normally see your dexterity is plus one and you only gain a half a proficiency. So that's another one. And then your luck stone is one. So that creates three for your stealth. I roll, your, I roll it, you hear the dice roll. Mm -hmm. Whoever's in there has noticed you. Oh, shit. And I'm gonna put out the battle map. Okay. And uh, so give me a second. I'm gonna just blindfold you again. So again, this is another opportunity to kind of role play or you know, just think while I'm putting stuff together. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, put this up. Okay, it's building. Now this is kind of just the first floor of the Burgermaster's Mansion. It's not fully detailed. There is another one. And I actually already have your models in there, actually. Um, you see it as you kind of trying to walk through the door, but the door creaks open, the door fully opens, and you know, you kind of just are a little anxious, you're a little nervous, right? And the whole door opens up, and I'm going to unblindfold you. You see four uh, bandits, like this one bandit notices you, and Ismark, right here, your adopted father, is being assaulted by some bandits. And they look at you, and as soon as it, and he's, he says to you, Irina! And now we just roll for initiative. You read, you, so you know how I did it? I showed you the other day how I yeah, roll. Yeah, you, you do that. So I'm going to roll. Now, obviously, I have everybody else's counter here, so just to get you used to it. So see hostile group 1, and Irina, you rolled an 11. I rolled a 17. See that? So I go first, and see, here's the initiative area over here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to move you below. I'm going to move me up to the top. I'm going to move you ahead. And I'm going to switch over to some battle music. <laughs> yeah. Let me switch over. This is to help you, you know, get in the... Get again, in the zone. Get in the zone a little bit to kind of also just figure out basics, right? Okay. So here's the round. We're in round one. Right? And here's the turn indicator representing whose turn it is. And... You know, as the turn, so there's like, you have seven players. You can see your count in the initiative order. So you can decide who, you know, goes first and stuff like that. So just for simplicity's sake, sake um, Kayla, who is the other person with you, she will um, go on your initiative count too. You understand? Yeah. But I will roll for her stuff as an NPC. So the bandits go first. The two bandits here attack is Mark right in front of you. And I'm going to roll. I do all attack rolls out in the open. So here we go. Attack roll one. Let me just make sure I'm right. I got everything good. Actually, I'm going to do a plus five. I usually have all this stuff prepared really well. For some reason, when I pulled this roller out, it wasn't 100%. And I try to be as accurate as possible to the holy scriptures of the player's handbook, dungeon master's guide, and all that stuff. And that's what D&D Beyond is at. So I roll. See how I roll? Just the bandit misses Ismark. He dodges out of the way. And his robe that he was doing is cut. He has a hammer in his hand. Right? He must have been nailing. The bandits, as you think, must have forced their way on. Bandit number two attacks. It hits him. I roll for damage. It cuts into his. He takes eight damage. Ismark is badly injured as the bandit strikes his left arm. And the other two bandits, they're guard, they're just making sure, and they look at you with like a sinister smile. It's your turn. I'll move the initiative counter down. So the, ban the other two bandits are readied in action. If you come close, they're going to attack you. What do you want to do? Um, let's see what I have right now. That's pain. Not charm person, pain. So yeah, you, this is a good time to cast a spell or whatever, right? So how you yeah. get it is you get a move and an action, like I told you the other day. So you have six inches to move, then you can cast a spell. There's like no um, hitting spells. There's like, okay, uh, I guess, because I can't really do um, much. Do I mean, I could, I could... 
cast. I gave you sleep, sleep. friend. Yep. Yeah. I could cast sleep on. Uh, Allow you to try to cast it on two people. I think I have to make a saving throw. Right? Let me see. Um, creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range are affected in ascending order yeah. of their. So, what you have to do points. is you have to roll hit points first. So, you actually have to roll. What is it? It's within 20 feet, though. So, should I move like closer to them? Um, no, the range is a you have a 90 foot range and a 20 foot radius. You see that under range oh. and area? Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm here to help as a new okay. player. It's fine. <laughs> So that's range and area. So has it, and I can, I'm going to give you, once you actually pick your spells, then I'll pull out the radiuses and everything. But for now, for simplicity, I won't put them out. Um, you need to roll 5d8 if you want to cast sleep. Need to roll. Oh, geez. 5d5 of them? Now you also, as a bonus action, you can cast Bardic Inspiration on yourself. Do you remember that? Yeah. And um, your Bardic Inspiration, I didn't give you a token for Bardic Inspiration, but what I'll do is I'll put another one of these out, and it'll be like a counter. It'll be a blue counter, and then yeah. you'll have a Bardic Inspiration of four, so you can cast it four times before I think a long rest. You get to cast it four times a day. Why don't you cast it on yourself first okay. as practice? So that's under your bonus actions. So if I go to actions and go to bonus action, you see Bardic oh. Inspiration, so you have four from there. Roll a D6. Roll a D6. Yeah. So it affects you for 10 minutes. And it, you Wait. can also use a bonus action first instead of an action, too. It's fine. So this is a D6, right? Yep. Not no, that one right there. Yep. Just like Monopoly or whatever, right? You oh, rolled two of yeah. them. That's okay. We'll just take the first result. You oh. got a one. <laughs> now you got a one. Do you want to re-roll? I think you can re-roll that with Lucky. Do you want to re-roll it with Lucky? Yeah, I would like to that because so that's So roll, just... so and we'll just take the second roll you did, which is a five, just for simplicity. So I'm going to go up to the Bardic Inspiration token here. Now you could have buffed um, your other player too. I think anyone within 30 feet can be buffed by Bardic Inspiration. So basically it's like role-playing wise, it's like you play your instrument or you say something to like inspire them because your, your, your character is like charismatic. But here, for simplicity's sake, we'll go up here. See where it says plus five? On, if I hit F1 up here, you see this? Hit pl yeah. plus five there. Now that roll can be added to any attack, saving throw, or ability check within the next 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Cool, huh? Okay. Yeah, and you yeah. can do that. So let's go to your D&D Beyond character sheet. You're going to mark that under Bardic Inspiration under your bonus action. You're going to just click one of the boxes. It's like a checkbox. So it means, hey, I used it. And so when you do long rest and short rest, all that shit will reset automatically and automate that process. So that's your bonus action. Now what do you want to do? You want to cast a spell? You want to cast sleep? Yeah, I want to cast sleep. Roll 5d8. So that, let's simplify it here. That's your 1d6. You saved it. Good. Click this d8 right here five times. Perfect. Now let's save that roll. If you're going to keep it, hit roll. And this is how many hit dice it can affect. You rolled pretty well, 29. I'll, I'll say just for brevity sake, so what you have to do is actually target it first, then roll the hit dice, and that's how many hit points it affects. Okay. For brevity sake, we'll say you could put these two guys to sleep. And I think I don't even get a will save, do I? They just fucking get, they're just knocked out. Yeah, I don't even get a fucking save, I think. Um, yeah, there's no save. Now, a thing you should know is elves and like undead creatures, they cannot be put to sleep. Yeah. For, what I'll do is I'm just going to hit the F key to turn them upside down to represent <laughs> that they're asleep. Now, if I want to, I can use a status. That's what these status things are from over here. I showed you the other time. Let me see if I can find sleep. Now, when they're asleep, they are... Um, they're just really unconscious. Just to simplify it, I can put these tokens out. And what I do is I just drop them out here. But I might change these tokens because they're really large. You're actually supposed to like put them over the model like that, right? Yeah. See, that kind of helps out with everything, right? Boop. See, it doesn't work sometimes. So I'm probably going to use a small little token thing. So I'll just put it like that. Cool, huh? Yeah. So your adopted uncle has taken a lot of damage. 
she uh, Carly comes up, and with this guy asleep, I'll roll an attack. Now, any attack against a sleep foe will wake them up immediately, but you get yeah. an attack with advantage. I have Carla's thing up here. So she attacks with against a, a prone or a prone person like this or vulnerable person with um, advantage. So that means I, I rolled it twice there out of my roller. I take the highest of the two, 15, that hits. But now I get to roll a crit. I think it's a critical hit if it's because it's against a, a helpless opponent. It's against someone who's just sleeping there. So what I do is I roll for, um, she hits with her short sword. So she rolls a three. So, but how critical damage works, it's under our house rules. To simplify, I just, basically you take six. So she rolls a D six plus three, nine damage, the bandit. She just stabs the bandit right in the neck and kills him. I'll help you out as we go. So I just, okay. I'm trying to explain a little bit. Basically, yeah. you know, critical hits really hurt, yeah. right? Because this guy's just totally helpless. And I'll delete his model, and I'll also delete that marker too. And it's now uh, Ismark. He's trying to defend off himself with the hammer. He swings it at one of the bandits. He misses wildly, and the bandits, they're chuckling a little bit. They're kind of just chuckling a little bit even though one of their friends just got ki killed. For them, you know, life is sometimes short in Zen and uh, Borovia. You know, they don't care. So it's now the bandit's turn. This bandit is within range, so he's actually just going to turn around and spend an action to wake this guy up. This guy wakes up, and I'm just going to delete that. So this guy is now awake, but he can't do anything. He spends half his movement standing up and readying his action. The other guy swings at Ismark, your adopted father. I roll. He rolls a 16. He does four damage. Ismark basically goes to zero hit points. He's not a warrior. He's not a fighter. You know, he's not that strong. He's just like the, the mayor of the city. And, you know, he's gotten slashed twice now. And um, he, had, when you a, a, a character dies, he has to make death saving throws. And it's similar to you being asleep. When it, someone else attacks him, they can create, you know, basically do a critical attack. And so now it's your guys' turn. So what do you want to do? Um, I have mending. Mending only works against inanimate objects. It's not like oh, you're a, you're oh, not wait. like you're not like a cleric. You, but if you can mend yeah. like you can yeah. mend your suit and things like that in your clothing. That's Sorry, right. you're not a cleric. Oh, really, okay. you're not a it's paladin. It's okay. It's fine. You don't have a healing potion either. It's, I didn't look at it. I just saw mending, and I was like, <laughs> "Sorry." Um, let's see. Is Mark has fallen? Your adopted father. You see him. That he gave you. Who gave you the luck stone? I'm what do you do? Charm. Charm person charm basically person. gives you have if you're in combat with them, you get disadvantage. Shit. So it's not that great for starters. Well, yeah, you've gotten you've killed right. one bandit though so far. I mean I'm gonna just turn this guy do upside is... down, by the way. Best I can do is sleep again. I can move probably. Hold on, wait. Let me. Let me so, the... by the way, let's go back to your spell sheet real quick for first level. I want you to check box that one spell because you used one spell slot. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. So click that once since you because you can any use any one of those three spells. You click it once though, so you have two more spell slots of first level, being level two. What do you do? Now, so can you, I not do sleep again? You can. Yeah, you can do anything you want. How I can move thirty. You can move uh, how many inches? Six inches. I'm going to move right there. Right here. Okay, so hit F one and move your character. I'm gonna move here because then they'll all be within range, will they? Yeah, all you right. can try to sleep all of them. Yeah, screw all it. Why out. not? Roll the D. Roll it. So where does that can happen? <laughs> I don't know. Guess we'll find out. <laughs> Go ahead and roll it. You rolled pretty good. Um, we will say the bandits all 
You say two of the bandits fall asleep. Let me take a look at their hit points, actually, to be really fair about this. Yeah, yeah. Because I could add the five to it. Only but... two of them. Only two of them fall asleep. So I have to. After I tell you the result, you can't add your bardic okay. inspiration. Okay. You have to yeah. add it. You you see the roll, and you have to say, "I'm using my bardic inspiration." See okay. how it works? Yeah. Okay. And it only if I attack you, you can't use it against me. It's only when you do something. You understand? It's like because you're yeah. inspired as a person. One of them's still awake. It's her turn. The uh, your friend's turn. Carly's turn. She goes up, and for brevity's sake, she kills another bandit. Okay. It is now. Um, it's not uh, the bandits' turns yet, so let me actually. I've been neglecting to move the counter. We're actually on round two, but it's still your turn. Now, how death saving throws work is I roll a d20, and I think um, if I roll lower than a ten or something, so if I roll higher than a ten, I get like a, <laughs> I uh, save, and I get three of these death counters. So Ismark has failed his first death saving throw. And um, this bandit here, so it's now my turn. I'm going to move the initiative counter up. We're on now round number three. If it doesn't freeze up on me. At round three, I go to hostile group one again. And now what I'm going to do, this guy right here is going to wake up this bandit here again. And he can actually move. And he's going to make sure he kind of gets into combat with you guys. And it, and the bandits, they look a little worried, but they're not super worried. So you can you know something's wrong. Um, Ismark is bleeding out. Now, I might change the rules on death saving throws and bleed outs and things like that, where Ismark, he's like mortally wounded, but he's just bleeding out because he's not dead. So you, I'm going to probably make it so you can guys do a five-foot crawl action. So Ismark can crawl a little bit. He crawls a little bit away from the bandit over here. Okay. It is now your turn. I'm going to move the initiative counter down. And you hear you hear footsteps coming from upstairs. Oh, God. So you know there's more bandits in the house. What do you do? <sighs> there's nothing else I can do but sleep. I... Carly looks at you and she says, she looks at you with like a look of desperation and she just says, run. I'll try my best. Run. What do you do? Run. It's your guys' turn. Now you can, when it's your turn, you can say something. But, um, and it doesn't cost you an action to say anything. What do you want to do? I'm do you want to try to use a bardic inspiration token on Carly? Or do you want to just say screw her and just let her fight it out? Well, I'll use an inspiration. Yeah, I'll, use, I'll definitely Roll a use D6. an inspiration. Roll a d6. Yeah. And so for Carly, we'll just keep it in her mind that she gets to attack with a plus six next to attack. I rolled a three. Perfect. Um, and I, I yell out to her, I'm like, I'm not leaving you behind. She's not like, who are these men? And, they're, and they just kind of grin, you know, with the shit grin, and they're like, they're like, kill the guy. They're like, kill him. Your turn, what do you do? Um, you're going to use your last spell slot? Yeah. Or are you going to try to attack him? Um, how, like, how would I attack him? Do I just say that I'm going to attack You have to move into, but you'd have to move five feet and then roll to hit with your rapier. I want to beat the shit out of this guy. Let's beat him up. Roll to hit. Use your uh, thing, D20? you know, your, no, you're going to use oh. your, if I go to your, your side of the table, I know you can, you can actually save camera. Oh, errors. I know this thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Remember I showed you that you have a plus three to hit roll. roll to hit. You hit, you almost got a crit. You, you rolled really well. So, um, roll for damage. One D eight plus one. That should be the next button. Boom. Eight damage. <laughs> How do you kill the bandit? I take my rapier and I, I step forward and with one swift motion I stab through his heart <laughs> and twist it as I pull it out. As you do that like blood like kind of comes out of his mouth and you see him he just smiles a little bit as you kill him. Oh. What do you do? 
Do I still have an action? No. Um, now you kill that. <laughs> so yeah, you do actually. Here's how cool this is. Now you've killed him. You've removed the threat out of your area, which is the five foot area. You can move again. So you can actually move. I think you can move. No, I'm so Yeah, you can move again. You can move actually up to the other character. I can re-review that rule, but you can actually move up to this bandit right here. Do you want to do that? Could I hit him afterwards? No, or you only get I one just... action. I will stay over here so that he can't. You want to move away a little bit? Uh, I'll, stay, I'll stay in the same spot so he can't, like, because he's probably, I don't know who he's going to go for, but um, I have less of a chance of getting Now, smashed. I'm going to roll a death saving throw for Ismark. I rolled a 10. I think that passes, so now he has one and one. If he gets to three, any, three he lives, three he dies. Okay, so now it is the bandit's turn, and we're on turn number four. Now down from stairs, you heard him coming downstairs. They knew something was up. Just going to copy pasta some more models in. A couple more bandits come downstairs, and they see what's going on, and they draw their swords. They must have been looking for you upstairs. Okay. It is now your turn. Um, so that guy doesn't do anything? Um, oh, yeah, he does. I'm sorry. He You're did. fine. Let me see where we're at. Which guy? This guy right here? Yeah, this guy. He looks over at Ismark, and the bandits look back and they say, kill him. And he comes up. Coup de gras, Ismark. Your father is dead. And they just, he just stabs his sword or his dagger into him, his short sword. You can't tell. It's like the heat of battle. Things are happening quickly. And you see him just rip across his throat. <coughs> the blood all comes out of his throat. And you think about maybe a happy time that you had with him. Maybe the stone that he gave you. Think of this happy time. He's dead. Your turn. What do you do? I move up to him. And Carly, and Carly says, run. There's too many. What do you do? Uh, I could take it, and I just, I just go. Can I, can I move up to him? You can do move up to him and attack if you want to. So it's what I'm gonna do. Okay, roll the hit. Well, and I need it. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna uh, use my bardic inspiration. <laughs> perfect. That's how you use it. So go to your little thing, right, and mark it down back to zero. So you used a plus five. Yeah. So I don't tell you if it hits or not, right? And you say, I'm using it, roll for damage. So you've inspired yourself. You take six damage, uh, the, the, the bandit takes six damage. Uh, the bandit is still alive, but he's hurt. He's badly hurt. Because before you guys were just coup de grace him, really. The bandit is pretty hurt though, but he's still alive. And Carly looks and she, he, she's like, she kind of just pushes you out of the way a little bit, like that, and she steps up, and she says, Run! And th these men must have came here for you, maybe. And she's like, I will hold them off the best I can. What do you do? I'll allow you to do a move, uh, a move action. Do you want to leave? I mean, I feel like this is going to get nowhere. <laughs> um... I step back a little bit, but I don't leave just yet. Move your character if you want to move him. Just like, just a tad, just a skosh. And these, um, it's her attack now. So Ismark is totally killed. I don't roll any more death saving throws for him. Because yeah. when you take a critical in your death state, you can be one over killed. If I roll over your hit points, you can be killed. Number two is you take two death saving throws automatically from being crit. So basically, if you have to be really powerful not to die from a coup de gras attack. Yeah. I'm going to roll to hit... Oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing? Um, I'm going to roll the other one. Let's see, I rolled a nat one. A one. I'll roll with this one. Uh, Carly, she's just like she's just like distracted. She's trying to get you to get out. She's like... Rah. She barely... like She just swings wildly. The situation is out of control. And you feel like the tide of the battle is losing of these two ban other bandits. A lot of men were sent for some reason to your, the Burgermaster's place. Like, who would want to kill your father? He's, he's never hurt a soul before. Um, it's now um, the bandits turn around turn number five. <laughs> okay. 
feel like bandits, this is supposed to be they, a shorter battle. <laughs> well, it's up to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the uh, bandits, they're moving closer. Um, I don't have the measurement thing put on, but they move around. And they actually do a dash action up to Carly. They don't get to attack her, but they move in range of her. This bandit gets to attack Carly. Now Carly's get she's starting to sweat a little bit. Carly's not a fantastic fighter, and she takes a, a pretty nasty hit for three damage as the dagger slices into her as the roller almost glitches out. And she okay. he he like kind of faints and stabs her in the leg just real quick. And Carly lets out like a scream. Your turn. Um I'm gonna move the initiative counter down. Your turn. I'm going to um can I do a spell and then run if I just stay in the same spot? You can cast a spell and move sixty feet. I'm sorry, okay. six inches. So can you could run out of the building. Yeah. Can I use now, how, another bardic inspiration? That's on a bonus act. That's true. You can. So roll a okay. d six for starters. Well, I'm going to do just that. And make sure you're marking your bardic inspiration on your character sheet. So you're on three. I I, I did. Great. Three. Good. Add it to your little t counter there in front of your character. I am going to. I'm in range for all of. The, am I in? If I were to do sleep again, am I in range for all of them? Every single you one. You could of hit them. two of them. If you want to hit, try to hit all of them, there's a chance you could hit Carly with it. Because Carly is wounded now. The other bandits are fresh. So it goes from the lowest hit points to the highest. Damn it. Um. I. Ah, oh, jeez. Um. Now, if you take I your mean, time, if you take too long, what I do is I, I throw it. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do throw it. down the time cube on you. Who? What do you want to do? I'm gonna do it. You want to cast sleep and run? Yep. Okay. Cast sleep. This is your last spell slot. I am doing the Bardic Inspiration thing. I think yeah. you can't. Let me take a look at it. I or don't can know. Can I not? Let me take a look. Do whatever you gotta do. It doesn't work on spells like this. The Bardic Inspiration does not work on spells. What does it work on? It works on attack rolls, saving throws. So if you attack someone, saving throws if someone casts shit on you or tries to hit you with poison, and. Um, ability checks. Like you're trying to okay, do one of your then, ability checks. Never mind. I just do that. And you cast sleep. You already cast it, right? And yeah. The bandits are pretty tough. Only one of them falls asleep. Okay. And then I'm gonna. Hopefully that helped her a little bit. And I'm gonna. Just... And as you're running out, they look at you and just like nod, smile. They're like, like acknowledge you. They're like kind of taunting you in a way. And they're yeah. they're like, we got him. That's what they say. They like we got him. Oh. Um, it's now uh, Carly's attack, right? Mm -hmm. So Carly gets to attack. Now Carly's taking a little bit of damage, so Carly um, uses her inspiration point to hit. We'll say so she stabs one of the other bandits. One of the bandits. Um, this one I think has already taken some damage, right? The one that's not asleep. And he, uh, he's just a little wounded right now. He's pretty badly hurt. It's now the bandit's turn. Now Carly is holding him off for you right now. I'm going to move the initiative counter down one run, turn six. So here's how it works. So Carly is here, right? Yeah. So they can't really break. If they start chasing after you, Carly gets an attack, one attack of opportunity or call a reaction to attack them as they go, right? And I can look it up if she gets multiple ones of both these guys, but she, I think she only gets one attack of opportunity. She can, she can swing at one of them, but the bandits don't care. They're not chasing after you. This one kicks this guy, he wakes up, and that's his action, and the other one attacks Carly. And you're out of spells. And, you, and you're thinking to yourself, you're out of spells. You're kind of outnumbered. Carly is holding him off as best you can. And you're like, that feeling you have of just always running comes back to you and you're like you're kind of overtaken by it make a will save 
or make a wisdom well, saving throw. You know where your saving throws are at? You're starting to get fearful that you have to run. I'm going to attack with the bandit, though, on Carly. The bandit hits Carly. Carly is badly injured. She maybe has, like, one more hit, and then she's going to drop. And she looks back as she, like, takes an attack, another attack. You can't see where it's coming from. The bandits look at you, and she just screams out, Run! I take a wisdom saving throw? Yeah, like a fear, like you're getting scared. Like this feeling of always running is coming back to you again. Like you it. feel like, we'll say you passed it. Okay. It's up to your choice. So I'm not forcing you to leave, but you're totally outmatched. And Carly is almost dead. Now they look at you and they're just not like two of the guys aren't even sweating. What do you do? It's your turn now. I'm going to leave the building. And you're going to start just, down. just going to run. Yeah. Just book it. Okay. Yeah. The bandits, they like, they like, as they're, as you're running out, they're laughing, but you don't, you don't know. You just, you don't look back. There's no time to like, see what happened with Carly. If Carly was killed or whatever, you know, you just, there's no time. You sheath your, um, your rapier, your disguise, you know, with all the sweat that you're doing in this fight. Your disguise is starting to come undone a little bit. And you look in the streets and people, they just have, even though you look like terrified, like running, um, people as they look at you, they, they don't really, um, they don't really care. You know, they just, they don't, not bothered by it. They're like, whatever. What is your character thinking? She is. You're just, are you running out of town? She's confused. Um, yeah. Well, what's on what's on the outskirts of town? Is there like a forest or something? You're just you're kind of disoriented. Yeah, there's like a forest. Yeah, I'll I'll run towards that. You want to kind of hide? Maybe I could hide. Yeah. You're running. You're running into the forest, and there's like a mist in the forest, and you're just running towards this mist in the forest, and you're hoping nobody is following you, and you're just running and running, and your lungs just fill, you just, you keep running. You're just terrified and you're crying and you're beaten a little bit. Now the bandits didn't even attack you. And you hear like, you hear a howl in the distance, the wolves. It's still daylight out though. It's like, it's not nighttime, but you know, do you, do, do you just, you keep running, you kind of lose sense of direction. You're like, you're like, where am I? What am I doing? And the howling gets louder and you don't know, but before you know it, there's, you see wolves around you. Roll a d20. Just a and you say, you're, and you just think to yourself, I'm gonna take my chances and you're running into this mist. Things are confusing. Thorns and the bushes are scraping at you. You run and you hit a tree, you become bruised. You're just running like almost what seems like an hour, you know, a time just has no concept because you're just terrified. You, you feel like you could collapse, but you can't. And these wolves are just coming on. You roll a 10. The wolves are gaining on you and gaining on you and gaining on you. In your memory, you can't think anymore. You don't know where to go and you're dirty and you're beaten and you're bloodied. The forest is hitting you. The branches are whipping across your face. And make a uh, constitution saving throw. De as you start to breathe in the mist, the mist gets thicker and thicker as you're walk running through the woods and you start choking and you're coughing and you're screaming and you can't take anymore. You pass your wisdom, you pass the constitution <laughs> saving throw. Now you could add your bardic inspiration to that, by the way. I mean, I'm just telling you, if yeah, I don't tell you the DC, I was thinking about it, but I was like, you, you know? cough, you feel like poison, almost like poison, something familiar you felt before you don't know anymore, but you cough and you, you fight it. You just, just like my fucking, I can't take it anymore. And you just run out of the mess and you, you see these, you see these other adventures, these guys. As you're coughing, you just collapse in front of them and you hear the growling of wolves. They're right behind you. And you look back 
you see their beady eyes just looking through this thick fog. I'm going to allow you to make one more roll. Make a perception check. So you get plus. Perception. And you can make it using Bardic Inspiration if you haven't used it yet. Do you want to use your Bardic Inspiration? So you have the three. Um. Wait, my perception check was a three. Oh, wait, no. No, you have to roll <laughs> it. Did you, um, did you roll it? You haven't rolled no, it No, I didn't. Wait. Okay, make a perception I... check. What's... That is a plus two. So, I mean, I can roll it and tell you. How about that? Oh, wait, I... no, it's a D. It's a D20. Yep, right. D20. So I rolled an 11, but I'll allow you to roll it just because this is a critical moment. Okay. So, so as a DM, I, I sometimes will allow you to do a roll, which I normally would do, so you don't know how well you rolled. Well... Do you want to use uh, Lucky? Would, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and I'll now, probably want to use the... Uh, oh, wait, no, I can't, because that's a... Never mind. Let me take a look at your Lucky. So did you already check one of your Luckies? You already did. You already used one Lucky, so that's two Luckies okay. you've used. Do you want to roll it again? Do you want to how roll the I, perception again? Wait, how do I check a Lucky? You go to your character sheet. It's under Feats and Trait. It's at there the very end, and there's three check boxes. And you get three of them per long rest. So yeah. it's basically once a day. So, yeah. Do you want to do it again? You just like, bring me fuck it. I want to see you. You fuck feel it. it. You feel fuck it. Me. Something is in there and the fog. And it's not the wolves. Roll. But you have to roll to see it. Okay. What are we... Wait. Roll a d20 again. You're just going to roll a d20 plus two. Again? Okay. Yep. And you have to take this result now that you've rolled lucky. So it's an 11. Do you want to add your bardic inspiration, which is three? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll remove the three points. Remove the three points. Got it. Whatever is in there. It, the, th the fog, as soon as you try to look at it or look at something, the fog, like, obscures it. But you feel it. It's a presence of some kind, something... Yeah. But the wolves, it's just too much for you, the wolves. There must be, like, 12 wolves, like a dozen wolves just emerging out of the fog slowly. And you see these other adventurers, right? You can tell that they're adventurers, you know, that are there. They're, they're coughing, like wheezing their fucking lungs out, just like you were almost about to. And like half of them, there's only one of them that isn't wheezing their lungs out. It's this half work. But before you know it, just the wolves are on you. And that's where we begin Sunday's game. Okay. Did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah, that was great for a for a first time, I think. It was pretty pretty good.